Hi everybody, Ryan Brath here. Welcome to my home build shop. And today I'm gonna to show you how to build a putter. So a putter is a great place to start if you haven't built clubs before. The most difficult part of building a putter is the thing that most people struggle with, and that is, which we'll get to after we get this, this process done, is putting the grip on. Because when you are putting a grip on, especially a putter grip, you wanna make sure that it's on straight. That way your hands get into the same position every single time. And one of the grips that we're actually gonna showcase that today is we're using Golf Pride's new reverse taper. That's a really cool grip, uh, brand new for Golf Pride. It's the first time they've used this manufacturing method to produce a grip, which not only helps when it comes to having a, a very consistent weight from grip to grip if you are changing sizes, which is kind of neat, but also the shaping. So rather than having where most traditional grips are bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom, reverse taper as the name implies is actually the opposite so the bottom hand is smaller than the top and there are a bunch of different shapes there's the pistol there is a round and then the more flat sided i'm holding the pistol here and as you can see like your traditional pistol grip it is a lot bigger from the top to the bottom of the grip but you turn it sideways and you will see that it is definitely a lot smaller than the bottom, which is how most players are going to grip it anyway. So we're gonna show you exactly how to install one of these grips on straight, because again, like I said, it's really important to make sure your putter grip's on straight. So through this process, I've got a putter shaft here. Now this is a composite putter shaft, so there's graphite at the, kind of towards the butt end, but the tip is steel, so you just prep it. That's important, anytime you're epoxying any components of a golf club together, you wanna make sure that the components are clean, clean of oil from your hands, clean of extra dirt or dust that might be in your shop or might have come in contact with it before you got to the process of putting this together. So the inside of the putter is clean and the outside of the shaft is clean as well. And you can do that with acetone and some blue shop towel. Now I am using just a quick set epoxy which comes in a syringe. A lot of times you'll see people use two parts. If you're gonna use a two part epoxy, I will weigh that out just because I wanna make sure the ratio is correct. But the great thing about using these types of syringes when you are using epoxy, if you are a beginner, it's a great place to start because it guarantees that you're gonna get the right amount of part A and part B every single time when you're going through the process. So I'm gonna put this on my little card stock here. You do not need a lot for a putter, about the size of a pea. What I like to do though, is make sure that my epoxy syringe is clean after I actually put the epoxy out. Cause if you leave it messy and it gets clogged, it becomes very, very difficult to actually use the rest of your tube. And that's not a good thing. Now when you're mixing epoxy, this is pretty important to do, especially when you're dealing with epoxy that's going to cure and dry or harden faster. And that is you don't start whipping it. Okay, we're not scrambling eggs here. All you want to do is just stir it together because you do not want extra air in that epoxy. If you've ever held a golf club and you twist it a little bit and you hear like these like popping noises, like these cracking noises, it's not likely actually the shaft, it's probably definitely not the club head, it's the epoxy and air bubbles that have gotten mixed in during the process. If you are dealing with a quick set epoxy, what ends up happening is those air bubbles get trapped faster. They don't get the chance to escape either during the mix process or the cure process. And you start hearing those clicking noises. So I'm getting close to the point where I'm, I'm done mixing this epoxy. And the thing that I want to do here is just see that there is a consistent mix throughout and there's one color. With most golf clubs, what people will use, what they'll call a quick center or a shafting bead. So I've got both here. I've got a quick center, which is a larger grain. Think of it like aggregate and concrete. Aggregate and concrete actually helps make it stronger. That's how this works as well when it comes to epoxy. It also helps fill some of those voids if there is a larger space between the shaft and the actual hosel of the golf club. And you can also do this as well with glass shafting beads. So I'm gonna use a slight little mix of both in here. That's going to help thicken up the epoxy and make sure that I also get a really nice bond. Some people like to joke and call it salt and pepper. Mix that in, a little bit of the quick center. You do not need a lot. We are talking like, if you can cover, like gently cover one quarter of the surface area, the epoxy that you're working with and mix it in, it's kind of the rough amount that you're gonna to wanna to use. So we've got this all mixed in. This is a, an epoxy that's going to get a little bit thicker, a little quicker, which is great when you are doing any golf club, whether it be a putter or something else. And now from here, again, this has been cleaned off. I'll show you how I do that here. 
Just a very, very small amount of acetone. Set that aside. Make sure it's dry. You don't want to leave acetone on there. And then from here, I get that little half pea size amount. Put it inside of the hosel. I will do this a couple times. I will repeat this process. The first one is just to make sure that I get a nice coating. Because once that coating is in there, I know that, okay, there's really not a lot of movement in that. It's, it's pretty snug. And I also don't want to have a lot of epoxy go up the shaft. In a club like this where you're not swinging it at full speed, it's not a huge issue. But just from a practice perspective, you don't want to have so much epoxy that as it's, because there's extra, it's moving all over the shaft. I've seen clubs, drivers, fairy woods that have a smaller inside diameter of that, that graphite shaft. You'll see bits of epoxy that's way up here past the hosel that can increase the risk of breakage. But it's just, it's bad practice to have that in there. And it can, like I said, down the line, create breakage. Or it can make a golf club, you're adding a whole bunch of extra weight. Could do things where like, oh, this club doesn't feel right. Something about it doesn't feel right. And a lot of times, it's because it's got this massive slug of epoxy sitting in the bottom of the, of the inside of the golf shaft that has dried and, and been there since the club was built. So. I can see that the inside here is, is fully coated. The outside of the shaft is fully coated, which means I got a nice adhesion. Now here's the trick, okay? What you'll notice is there is epoxy above where the shaft is. Now being a putter, we want this just like any other club in our bag to look as clean as possible. So what I'm going to do is I can push this all the way in and I'll get that last like eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch into the golf club. I want to actually pull that out because that epoxy is not doing anything, okay? That extra little bit of epoxy that's at the top isn't helping us much. And when it dries, it's going to be a lot harder to clean off. So because of that, I like to pull the shaft out just a tiny little amount, then do a final clean. Especially with a putter, I'm not overly concerned of, oh, this extra little bit is, is really going to be super important when I go to swing and try and hit this thing 140 yards, okay? Because you're not doing that in the first place. I will grab that little rag with acetone once again, and this is actually still damp, which is great. And I'm going to go around. And you'll see, we're still getting a little bit more there. One extra little turn. I'm really not getting anything on that second pass, just a tiny little amount. And now, make sure that it's nice and snug all the way to the bottom. There's no logo to align, which is great when we're doing a shaft like this. Some putter shafts will have that. But without a logo, I just want to make sure that I line it up straight. Know that the shaft is in the bottom of the hosel. And we wait for that thing to dry. And then from there, all we have to do is install the grip. And like I said earlier, make sure that the grip is on straight. So we're going to let that dry. And then we'll head over to the gripping station in just a moment. We waited. And the epoxy is now dry on our putter. I'm looking at this thing and it is nice and clean. So I have nothing else extra to go through here at the hosel. So we're going to take ourselves to the gripping station. But before we get there, I want to show you one little thing. Because you probably wondered, why did you save the epoxy? What it allows you to do is know that that epoxy is properly cured. So it's properly cured. It's not going to come apart. It's not going to twist on me. That way I can finish up my assembly process. And now I can throw it out because now the art's worthless. Grip goes in nice and snug and it's not going to twist. This is important. I've talked about this before, but adjusting your clamp strength when you're going in between different golf clubs is extremely important because what that will do is it will prevent you from crushing, potentially crushing a graphite shaft or completely breaking a steel shaft. Watching that clamp pressure is always very important. I happen to be installing an all new Golf Pride reverse taper grip. So I've got the medium size pistol here that I will be installing on this putter. One of the questions I get all the time, how do you make sure that you are installing a putter grip on straight? Putter grips at this point, in most cases, a little bit more expensive than a full swing grip because it is designed to be a precise instrument as part of your putter. Remember, the grip is the only connection you have between you and your golf club. And one degree on this putter face off from a 10 foot putt will mean that you miss it. Having the grip on straight relative to that club face is extremely important. And I'm gonna show you how to make sure that it is on there correctly. So you're probably wondering, do you just eye it? How do you actually make sure that the grip is on straight? It doesn't involve lasers, it involves something special. 
well, it's, it's special, but it's actually a tool that you can pick up at any hardware store, and that is a level. Using one of these is a great tool to make sure that the putter face is square. Now look, I have a gripping station. I have these lines here that I know are going to be parallel to the putter face. So I can sit the grip or sit the putter into my gripping station. I can see those lines. If I want to, I can adjust this bottom here to really line it up. But I understand that not everybody has access or will be using a gripping station when they are putting a grip on their putter. Some people might just be using a vise and crank it in there with a rubber clamp. So we are gonna show here how to do it if I didn't have that. So I'm gonna take the level and put it on the putter face and I'm gonna look at the top there. That is pretty darn square where I want it to be. Great, step one. I'm gonna hold on to this because we're gonna need this in a moment. Next up, some people will take a piece of tape and mark and then they'll get all this stuff out. I like to use my grip, dis grip tape dispenser here. I go a little bit past the length of the grip. I will, this is another one too. You don't go to the very end because the grip doesn't go to the very end. You generally go to that last little part where, part where the butt section is. So I will mark there, go to the end, line it up, give myself about a quarter inch on the bottom of the grip so the tape does not stick out. Put that on, line it up. You do not need a whole giant ponytail of tape sticking out the end, about half an inch. Fold it over, make sure that it's sealed nice and tightly. Double check here to make sure that I've got the whole length of the grip, but it's not sticking out. And if you've ever watched me do a grip in the past, you'll know that I'm pretty particular about making sure that it's nice and saturated because I want the grip to go on easily. And in the case of a putter grip, I want to be able to adjust it. So I have an extra little piece of towel here. I will put the nozzle. I also like to keep my hands clean. I'm a little picky about that. Um, so I will put the nozzle in the end of the grip and I will just start filling that grip up and you'll start to see solvent come out on the end of the grip. I recycle the solvent, so I am not worried about waste or anything. As long as I make sure that that grip is, or the, the inside of the grip is nice and saturated and the tape on the grip, on the shaft, sorry, is nice and saturated, I will put that away. I'll grab my extra little piece of paper towel here, clean off the end. Because I don't want to get sprayed with any extra solvent on the inside, I like to hold the grip like that with a little towel or you can use um, just another shop towel around your, around your shop. Push that on, and then, I'm sure the sound effects were un, uh, not necessary, but grip goes on, clean the bottom. Now I've got time here, okay? You don't need to rush, you don't need to be like, it's, it's, it's gonna dry, okay? Look, the reason I saturated the tape is because it gives, my, gives myself a couple minutes to just make sure that everything is on nice and straight. So what I like to do is I double check I know that the putter hasn't moved because it hasn't moved in the clamp. I'm going to look down the length of the grip. You'll notice in a lot of cases, there are little alignment markers depending on the grip that's actually being used. Now in the case of this reverse taper here, there's a very distinct line at the top of the grip. For the pistol grip, for myself, I can kind of look at the, the front of this and kind of line it up to the, uh, the top, or the, sorry, the leading edge of the putter. But this is where the level comes in. You just take a moment, balance it on the top. Now I'm just trying to make sure, you know, look, it's not gonna sit square. So this is where you have to manually find the top of the putter and just try and line it up throughout the, pro, like throughout the length of the grip. Perfect, okay. Wipe the end off. Check the end of the grip one more time. No matter how many times I do it, I like to go back. Let's give it the old eye check. I can see straight up and down at the putter head where it's sitting, looking at the, the top of the grip, even though I've checked it with the level, it looks parallel. And the nice, not only does it look perpendicular to the leading edge or the top line of the putter, but it's also sitting parallel to that flange line, which if you have a putter with a longer flange line can make this process really easy. So I'm looking at that, lining it up, and then one little trick 
is if you're not used to like putting on a putter grip, set your putter down. The reason this is here is because it helps a putter sole properly. So I can set it down, because if you set it down in concrete, a lot of times the putter face is gonna open up. Look, I'll show you here. See that? It opens up by like five degrees, six, seven degrees. The reason is because of the way the sole is designed. It's not designed to sit on, and if I can kind of manipulate it to get it square, but if I set it in the playing position, that putter head now sits square. I can double check it, and one little thing that I like to do is I kind of close my eyes, especially my own putters. So I close my eyes, line the putter up, feel like it's square, open my eyes again, and if the putter looks square to me, that's how I know that I've done the right job, I've done the job properly, and I've got that putter grip on nice and straight. Now that's a really long way of showing you how to get a putter grip on straight, but whether you use one of these methods or all of these methods, it gives you a number of options to make sure that when you are installing whatever grip it is going to be on your putter, again, I'm using the reverse taper from Golf Pride, pistol style, pistol style medium for this one here, that it's going to feel exactly like it should. Because the important thing about any grip in your bag, especially your putter, it is the only connection, I know I say this a lot, but it is the only connection you have between you and your golf club. When it comes to your putter, that's an extremely important element of putting well. And this way you can be more confident that no matter what, your putter grip is on straight. And hopefully you're going to take that confidence to the putting greens and know that no matter what, your putter grip is on exactly the way it should be. I'm Ryan Brath. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching.